All right. Yeah, Coach, just checking in uh, on, on any updates on Calvin and uh, any other injured uh, players from yesterday's game. Continue to tell you guys, you know, as soon as we get an update, we'll give you an update. I understand you got to ask. No update there, D led. Um, injuries, we're just still waiting for the medical experts. Uh, you know, like m most Mondays in the NFL, you know, MRIs and making sure the doctors and we get it right. But uh, so we don't uh, know exactly what we're dealing with. Okay. And uh, coach, um, the offensive line, we probably didn't do mu much about them yesterday, but no sacks, uh, just a couple hits. Can you discuss their uh, play over the last few weeks? Yeah. Like, like a lot of uh, players on our team, a lot of groups on our team, do they continue to work, get better. Uh, they did a nice job with the game plan. Uh, it's a good defense, and, you know, it's it kept Matt pretty clean. And uh, the decision uh, to go with one sitter, uh, how would you all arrive at that? Just like we do a lot of our decisions, d -Lab, we're going to make the best decisions to, to help us win, to help the team. And that's no knock on Drew. Uh, just what we felt based off the last couple of weeks. It could change this week, d -Lab, depending on the matchups, uh, just how everything goes this week of practice. Yeah, I'll save some for later, perhaps, uh, so we can get move on. But uh, well, how 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 did you uh, see Walker's play when you got to watch it again on film review? And uh, did the guys get a big kick out of that in the meeting today? Well, I, I think it's uh, it I think it's a um, you know, what goes unnoticed is that it is a is a coordinator uh, effort. That was a great call by Dean. Uh, you know, Mike popped out there. And you know, Foy did a nice job on the uh, on the rush wrapping around, and Mike popped in there. And so I'm assuming that he obviously that uh, Cam probably didn't realize where Mike was popping from, and it was a good disguise, but it was a good by all eleven. It takes everybody to do their job, and uh, it was a good job by Mike being in the right spot and taking advantage of it, and and really good job by Foy too, not doing anything light people up, you know, using the rules to make sure he helped Mike get in the end zone. Michael. Hey, Arthur, just to get this out of the way, I know you said that there's still tests. Is there concern at all with Harris and Fowler that either one of those are long term injuries? Wait till I get the uh, real information, Mike. I, I don't feel like you're concerned about a lot. Deal with what the facts are when I'm giving them, and we make sure that we're, uh, that, like I said, the medical experts look at it and we confirm it and we have a plan that we're not there yet, but um, I'll wait till I get the actual facts. Uh, as far as Cordero, he didn't seem to play in the fourth quarter. What went into the decision beyond that, the two point, the last play and then the two point conversion? What went into the decision to not use him on the last two, really two drives? Because you had that other well, one, one play. Drive, drive. He had one play. So I wouldn't right. even call it. So, drive, right, that, so, so three drives. You're there. playing situational football. We, like I told you yesterday when you guys asked, again, you can continue to look for deeper meanings and some of it is just practical. I said some guys, you know, they can't play. Or do they need to play 70 plays? You know, you may be able to get, you might have diminishing returns. So we got a lot of faith in all the runners, depending on what, what we're trying to accomplish. We're in a four minute situation there. And, you know, like I told you yesterday, I, I think Quadri Olson does a hell of a job for us and he'll continue to get carries. And I believe in the guy that got popped out. Uh, Daquan Jones made, it, made a good play. And then, you know, Mike Davis, we got in that four minute drive and he did a nice job. So it's no knock on CP. Again, you guys want to put labels on things or think more. There's deeper meaning into it. We got faith in all three runners, and and how do you want to you want to cut it up? You said that uh, you disregarded the early fourth quarter, and then you talk about one play that's not a drive, and then we had the four minutes. So uh, we got faith in all those guys. Uh, you mentioned earlier, or you mentioned yesterday, that you feel like y'all haven't even scratched the surface of what Dean might be able to implement. How much did you think you would be able to really put in this year? versus what you've actually been able to do well it's what your guys can handle and we're not going to force things that maybe not fit our, our current personnel and that's not a knock on anybody that's just the way it goes you, you're constantly evaluating that appreciate it thanks mm -hmm. josh arthur michael walker said something yesterday about last week they were talking about we got we want to be five and oh now that you know got one down, you want to win four more. Does it matter to you how your players talk about the end no. of the season in terms of it's a chunk that needs to be, we, we need to finish strong or versus 
Just one week at a time, one week at a time, one week at a time. Our players don't have any problem focusing on the task at hand, Josh. I, I think we can sit here and talk in cliches and say, that, you know, nothing else matters, but we all as humans can multitask. You got to get off this, this Zoom here, and I'm sure you got other things to do today. And you can handle that, and you can also handle being present right now. It's no different. However, they want to handle it. We, we our guys won't have an issue. We know we have a uh, hell of a challenge this week going out to San Fran, playing a really talented football team that's played pretty well the last couple of weeks. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Shades McElhaney. Hey, thanks. I like the shades too. <laughs> um, Arthur, we were talking to Matt last night, and uh, he said that you can see the offensive line's confidence is being built kind of week in and week out. And I was curious, can you see that in them? And in what ways do you think that manifests for them? Well, I think it, you're, you're starting to see, uh, like I said, a lot of the, their work pay off. I mean, it's, it's, there's no shortcuts. If you want to do things the right way, it's a, it's a long, hard journey. And uh, certainly at times you want things sooner rather than later. That's why we didn't sit there and, and panic and, and give up on the run game. We know how we want to be, how we want to play in a style. And, and, and it's a credit to, to Coach Ledford and, uh, and those, those guys up front. So they'll continue to work. I thought they played pretty, really physical. I thought they finished well yesterday. And, uh, you know, the key would be, can we go out to San Fran and do it again? Uh, it, it's funny because I don't think I've ever asked you any, like, special teams questions. But over the last mm -hmm. couple weeks, I, I feel like I – can't not talk about Thomas Morstead and, and what he's kind of meant for this this team and for you what what do you kind of look at when you're looking at a guy like that who came in and has really performed well for you guys and meant a lot to the field position well we we've had some good contributions uh you know Dustin Colquitt did a nice job in his role here and he's a veteran and, and, and a, certainly a, a talented and capable punter and then by circumstances Thomas came in here and he's done a good job the last couple of weeks He's a pro. Uh, he works hard at his craft and uh, smart guy. I'm sure, you guys should talk to him sometime. Give you guys something to talk about. But he's a very intelligent guy, player, smart player. Glad he's here. Cool. Thank you. Zach Hine. Hey, Coach, good seeing you. When you uh, make franchise history, you're doing something right with Cordero, uh, five TDs, rushing and passing. Uh, you know, he's showing his versatility. Um, was, was this a young man who just needed reps that you, you know, obviously everybody's seen his kick return skills, but he just needed opportunities um, on both facets of the offense to prove what he can do in this league, and that's what you've been able to give him, reps? Well, I think a lot of times it's just a lot of his experiences probably helped him get to this point that we obviously had a vision for him, and and he's taken it and run with it. So, you know, credit to the CP. He's done a nice job. Uh, week after week, and uh, we just find different ways that, that we fit into the plan each week, how, how, how he can help us and help us win. He's done a nice job. Mike Cunningham, do you have anything? Yes, Coach, obviously the number one goal is in the NFL is to win games. You know, your record is what your record is, but you also want to improve. Uh, in your view, what aspects of your team have improved from from week one until now? several um you know obviously we had some dips michael but uh i think the mindset how we how we finish close games you know you don't let things that bother you like you know yesterday or down in miami you know you you get down you got to come back uh same thing in new orleans i think you saw yesterday too um you know close the game out you know you want to end the, you want to end the ball as an offense uh you know if you got a lead you want to end up in in the victory formation which we which we did so I think you've seen certainly the mindset of finishing games has improved. Um, I think you're seeing a team that's playing smarter and, and more together. We got to do, you know, still got stuff to work on. You don't want to hand team stuff, you know, the penalties and special teams that, you know, that led to pretty good field position for them, you know, two touchdown drives. We still got to stop them. I'm not saying that blaming one phase, but those are things we can improve on. But overall, I think we're doing a better job in all three phases. You said the uh, the mindset at the end of the game is does that include you as a coach? I know you were said you expressed some disappointment about the way you handled, for instance, the uh, the Washington football team game. Uh, it wasn't about the mindset that I was disappointed, Michael. More about the results. So that's not what I that's not what I said. Um, 
you know, they're saying you do a lot lessons learned. If you had to do it over again, I think that's where you've got to be objective. Say, all right, if I get in that situation again, knowing, you know, do you do you take an ultra conservative approach or do you say, hey, look, I'm gonna I'm gonna trust it, you know, the veteran quarterback to make the right call. So that's what it was about. It had nothing to do with mindset. George. Yeah, Arthur, as much uh, success as you guys had running the football in Tennessee, uh, how tough was it during this part of the season when you guys were not doing it? And how satisfying is it now that you've rushed for 398 yards in your last three games? I would call it tough. tough. I mean, obviously, uh, George, that's why, you know, you don't give up on it. You keep working at it. You, certainly, you could say you get frustrated, but I wouldn't call it tough. I think it's uh, definitely pleased that it's trending in the right direction, and we just got to continue to do it, you know, that's, that's how you're going to win games late in the year, especially on the road. We got to continue to, to improve and, and, and evolve and adjust. You know, it's not that you can't just repit print the same game plan, certain things you want to make carry over, but that's a challenge in the NFL, especially when you're playing good teams and San Francisco, a pretty good team. Thank you. Thank you. Do you let any follow up? Yes, uh, coach. Um, What's your appreciation for a veteran like Stephen Means, who uh, is contributing, you know, at age 31 after being a perennial, you know, backup throughout most of his career? He's just fought and stuck around, uh, finally getting a, a chance to get out there and play regularly on Sundays. You call him 31 years old? Old? No, no, I'm not calling that. No, that, no, no. Can no. offend a lot of people on the Zoom call. Yeah, no, no. no. Uh, I mean, in NFL years, that's old, but, you know, well, but, um, unless you're a quarterback, I guess that's changed. Yeah, yeah. So uh, no, I got great appreciation for Stephen Means and what he what he does, and like I do a lot of our players, we've got some really good veterans here at D-Led, and, and Stephen Means is is about as uh, tough as a guy. I've been around and, and a really quality person too. Uh, really fun to work with Stephen. In uh, San Francisco, uh, George Kittle, where where's your uh, I mean, he's just kind of like an old throwback football player. Terry Tory Holt said uh, this morning, if he couldn't run routes, he'd be playing left tackle. What do y'all, um, you know, seeing that in Kittle and the 49ers, some of the issues they'll present for you all? Well, I think Kittle, got a lot of respect for George Kittle. Uh, you know, he's one of those players, and you look at, you watch him play, he doesn't cheat the game. Uh, he's a very, very effective route runner. He knows how to get open, makes big plays and big moments. Uh, I really got a great, I really have a great appreciation of the the way he plays every down. Um, mm -hmm. Goes without saying, but that's you know, similar mindset to when you know I worked with Delaney Walker. Both those guys, they can bring it. They do a play after play, week after week, uh, and sustain success. D led, so I've got a great appreciation for George Kittle. Thanks, Coach. That's it for me, David. All right, Michael. I, I'm personally offended by the old comment, by the way, just so you know, Arthur. Yeah. Totally, totally offended. Uh, I've got a couple more for you. First, uh, the backup quarterback decision, you went with Felipe and, and not Josh behind behind Matt. What went into the decision between making that flip? Because we don't really see those guys in practice ever. A lot of it's just uh, with the game plan. You know, we'd, we'd gone kind of heavy. Felipe had been more of a position player. And then playing on special teams, he had a role. Some of it, you know, didn't feel as necessary, but he had a package. And then the way it's been trending, I mean, I, we'll make that decision weekly based on if we're going to put all three of them up, then Felipe would go and have – he's got to have a role on teams if we're going to address three. We address two, and that'll be decided, you know, but the game plan, how they practice that week. They know that. So that's what we, that's what we did there. So, so it's not necessarily Felipe passing Josh on the depth chart. It's, it was more game plan centric. It's like with all our players, and we we evaluate it every week. Everybody's got a chance to be up. There's no uh, obviously some are more obvious than others that you, you can assume will play, but the majority of our roster, there's going to be decisions made by the end of the week. And with Kaminsky, he's a guy who's up for the first time in a while. What when was it? Just the injuries that led to that situation, or were you seeing other things as well that? Led you to give him a shot. Both. What did you think? How did you how did you assess how he played? He did, he did a nice job. You know, played his role and what to do. Like I said, that's uh, I know these guys are professionals and they get paid, but still, you know, uh, 
His approach hasn't changed. You know, John, that's not that's not easy. I mean, I, 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 there's two ways to look at it. If you're a cynic, you can say, well, he's paid to, to be ready. True, it is. But there's also, I've seen guys go south because, you know, they're inactive over and over and over again. And then, you know, you get late in the year or you know, something happens, circumstances come up and, and he's ready to go. So very pleased with how John stepped up yesterday and how he played. But I, but I appreciate the way John comes to work every day. He's always ready to go. He's always prepared. He practices hard. Um, that's why I like guys like John on our roster. Appreciate it. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Josh? Sorry, any follow-ups, Aaron? I just got one, just kind of big picture, Coach. If you can just educate me on the game. We, uh, surprise, I don't want to put a word in your mouth, but when they were up, uh, down nine, and they went for two late, um, I guess what would be the coach's thinking behind that as opposed to, um, you know, I guess just kicking the extra yeah. point like they did. I'm just – John yeah, that's a pretty good, pretty good argument. There's people that have a hard liner. I saw something where John Harbaugh was talking about. I guess they got in a similar situation. I haven't seen their game, but I saw that. Um, well, you know, you say you'd rather know what you, what you what you need if you go for it early. You go for the two-point early. So if you don't get it, then you know you're down two possessions. Uh, I think you could make a pretty intelligent, sub subjective argument going against it. I've been a part of a game. It happened to us a couple of years ago. We are playing Cleveland in Tennessee. Similar situation, they went for two, didn't get it. Now you're down nine. Now you're down two possessions. It certainly can affect the play call on the other side. There's more pressure, even when you're in the, the put stress back on the offense. So you could make an argument, you know, the numbers are what they are. So, but if you say, all right, if you can keep it a one possession game, that can affect the offense in four minutes. Because if you don't get it, essentially you got a two possession lead and it, it, you may, it may allow you to be a little more conservative play calling offensively, or it could change maybe what you would call you get into a third down it may not be as much of a got to have a situation so there's a lot there's a lot at stake um so they decided to, to go for it you know to make a seven point game right there and then they had the penalty and it backed up and it made it an eight point game so that's a pretty good argument i know what the numbers say uh, it's ironic that came up on our game and i'm assuming it came up on baltimore game if that's why uh john harbaugh was talking about thank you mm -hmm. anything else all right, thanks guys. All right, thank y'all. Thanks Arthur, thanks Bassie.